What's up, my miners of intelligence and consciousness? I'm Rick Brooks, and this is Rick's Mind. Today with me, I have the man, the myth, the legend, and one of my best friends, Andrew Allen. What's up, dude? What's going on, man? Dude, living the dream. You know, it's been it's been fucking crazy for me lately. I I just made a giant career transition. I yeah. Um, yeah, go ahead. No, you, oh man, you've been you've been uh, put that in the works for a while now. You've been trying to manifest that for probably about a year. You've been talking about it, you know, and it's really cool to see it finally fucking come to fruition, man. I just talking to you the last few, you know, few times on our phone conversations. You've been you just sound livelier. There's like life back into you. Your soul isn't so much sucked anymore. Is that, is that kind of how you're feeling right now? Yeah, that's how I feel, dude. Um, <laughs> I mean, like w- what happened was it's kind of a, an interesting journey because like i i would talk about how much i hated my job as a freight broker and i was like i went up to seattle with the lady i was around to her friends and around a lot of these <clears throat> these you know late 20s early 30 year old men and women and they're all in tech and you know, pretty soon I started talking like salaries, and I was like, "You make how much?" And I was like, "Fuck my job, bro! Like, I'm, yeah. I'm out. I'm, I'm, I'm out." I mean, actually, not that I didn't make a bad living, but I just I was over it, man. And I want to yeah, get well, into tech, you know, well, instead you might, of like you might have to get me into tech or get what you're doing because I know fucking working in socials and schools and shit, I'm fucking probably get paid in peanuts compared to what you guys get paid now. And well, first off, I don't know why that. <laughs> I don't know why you ever went in to this feel it's terrible i the stories that you tell me are so depressing i would not want to do what you do or do what jen does like it's terrible they're just well, her her career field is disgusting like she's you know, she's cleaning up after people helping to move helping people sh- fuck that man can't do it no nope, won't do it uh, God dude, bless her. She's an dude, angel. Dude, it's all about the profit. Dude, you know, have you been watching this new fucking sensational show on Netflix called uh, The Squid Games or Squid Game? No, I have not. Oh, my God. Well, dude, you got to watch it. It's fantastic. And and it's uh, it's a South Korean show. But, you mm-hmm. know, I watch the, with the subtitles. I can't watch it dub. But, dude, it's all what it is. They get these people who are just gamblers. at. They're just pretty much at their wit's end. And they're all just striving for money. And it's, I don't want to give too much away, but it's almost a, a Hunger Game slash Saw kind of vibe. But well, also, story was, go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt. So, with all the stories, so they take a bunch of, they take all these gambling addicts for a bunch of people who need money. A lot of people who are desperate, people who've, you know, pissed away all their money and they find them and they take them to this place and they don't know where they're at and they have to play a game. And the game is red light, green light. And people are like, what the fuck is this? I can play red, light, green light. But the, the thing is, if you mess up, you get eliminated. You get shot. Just, I watched the trailer for this fucking today. kill you, dude. <laughs> and, and so I don't want to give too much away, but I'm not too far. I'm only like two, two episodes. But really what happens is they give people a chance to, to stop playing. <laughs> you know, they're like, all right, we can keep going. And they realize, like, you know, you're going to get – if you go, you can get – like it's like four billion dollars or something yeah, like yeah. that. It was forty five point six billion yet won. So I googled like forty five, and Google already knew people. Everyone's googling forty five point six billion won is the USD. Like, yeah, to USD, which is I guess is like <laughs> three point eight billion dollars or something like that. Ooh, hell yeah! And um, kind of stories like they they all decide to go back, and then they go back to their fucking shitty lives, and everyone's still down and out. Everyone's still broke. Everyone's still miserable. They have shit jobs, whatever. And they go right back in. <laughs> you know? And that's... And wait, I think, wait. No, 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 no. Wait, for real? Like, so... Spoilers so they, alert. Sorry, if you guys... Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, this watch is, whatever, spoil, it's only two, epi- I'm only two episodes in, so... Spoiler alert for everyone else. I like things being ruined for me, so keep talking, <laughs> dude. I am I am so interested. You know what? You know what? You know what? Honestly... What joys me is that DeMarco has to listen to this, and I'm pretty sure that he doesn't want this ruined. 
Well, that's all. I don't know in episode two, so like I don't know any more than that. I don't know what's going on, but kind of we were talking about, you know, is like you know, I when I was first in college when I was I, going, I, I, I was genuinely, like, I'm a huge fan. I I don't know who made it, but I love Korean cinema. So the cat ears are coming off, and you guys can say yeah, when done. to we're come back. I'm only, I'm no, only no, 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 that's it, so. <laughs> no, that's it. So, but so no, these... I was just saying the moral of the story is that was like when I was going to college. I was I was going there because I wanted to do a career that like, I thought I was going to be able to help make a difference. I was like kind of young and thinking, oh, I don't need a job that's about money because college is. A, I think I took a bunch of mushrooms actually too, and I kind of realized like I had this big revelation. I was like, you know what, the world needs people to help people, and this is what college is. It's it's a place to meet people, connect, and to build better community and build better people. We need to help, you know. All the humans, everything, and so it's like I'm gonna go in a job where I can help people and make a difference because that's what the world needs. Like money is just this fucking illusion that we created. Money is only valuable is what you know we did. We deem it's valuable. It's fake. It's imaginary. You know, I'm going on this whole hippy dippy bullshit mushroom trip. I'm like, you know what? That's what I'm doing. I'm gonna help people. If 31 year old Andrew could go tell 21 year old Andrew to fucking stop with that fucking bullshit and go into business or finance or something like that, fucking go study a math book, go fucking study the math because what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> yeah, dude, I, I, you're a good person. Like, I, there was no, there was no way in when I was. 21 or anything i was like i want to be fucking rich what do i need to study to be rich like i mean if you would have told me like i could make hundreds of millions of dollars by dumping chemicals in the ocean and like figuring i'd have been like a 20 like you know what we can fix this (laughs) science can fix this this is a and by the way i hope kyle's not kyle that's a joke i just i just i just i just just had an interview with a with a scientist is a a a global or an activist scientist i'm joking folks but maybe not back then yeah i care now but back then i would be like yeah let's do it let's let's sign it up let's do it if i could have opened up a a landfill business i I would have done it man i was so poor in college i hated it i remember you coming back doing your first ponzi scheme in college and i was like what dude dude, shut up dude you were fucking all about you came with a briefcase wearing a suit on a fucking flip phone and wait wait i'm sorry i have to be involved with this no 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 no, no, shut up (laughs) it should not have you in on this this is a rick's mind exclusive right now andrew allen lay it out i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure you opened his first line of credit to to get in this ponzi scheme like you know this is a small investment now but you know i'm gonna be fucking rich and who cares and you know what i'm gonna do this and me and bat bauer just look at each other like this fucking idiot but you know what? he was on something yeah you know, he was already on that has such of- strong rick energy i cannot i cannot <laughs> okay, explain all right all right all right, all right. He came in with like a watch like a flip phone briefcase like i was I- yeah i was gonna drop out dude what's I, up I, my I, name's I, the I, black I, gordon <laughs> gecko we're going. Dude, that's what I wanted to be. That's what I'm so. That? Z- I don't even remember yes, what it was. Of course, of course, of course well, it was I'll tell TV. you this. I think my mom it wasn't, bought it, it was TV it, for you. Yes, no, it it, no, it was it was ACN. It was oh. like some. It was. Oh my God, dude. pull up ACN. <laughs> ACN is this a, not a even stock a, symbol, right? No, they're not. No, no, no. That's the name oh, of the company. Oh, oh, Rick, come on, shut up, come on, shut up. Did you, were you going to do Cutco next? Like, listen, <laughs> I would have probably tried that too. I, honestly, I, if listen, anybody could crush Cutco, you could do it because you could sell okay. like you could sell like a okay. dead rat to people. So, so let me just explain this. I went to this. This is partly my parents' fault. So, mom, dad, screw you. But th- I, I, I went to this little meeting, and listen, the girls were so hot. They were all so hot. And they seemed to be like rich, and everyone was like talking about how much. Mo- which, by the way, if you're in sales, and everyone's like, "You're gonna make a lot of money," like mm, maybe that money. might not be the company. That might not be the company for you. But anyways, <laughs> everyone's like, you know, and I'm like, you know, I'm gonna do this. Like it's like 500 bucks to get started, and I was selling like vi- like phone. Like the- it's so fucking stupid. Like obviously, uh, this is like early iPhone. Like this is probably before. This is before like FaceTime. Yeah, this is like before yeah. FaceTime, before it really like, you know, we figured out what the capability of the cell phone was. Everyone thought that these video like this it's um it's a, think of like a Cisco phone where you have video capabilities and you're selling that, plus I was selling like 
TV packages or some sh- I forgot about that. Like TV. I signed Dude, your I mom up. I sold mom to your mom. Friend. Yeah, yeah. My mom was support. She barely even knew you, but I was like, this is my friend from college. She's fucking trying to help him out. And that's that's what she does. She's like, oh, hell yeah. She, she, she bought a car from Dan Plant. She, well, she needed a car, but that's what she did. Oh, Dan's selling a car? Fuck yeah. Like, shout out Dan Plant. Is the Bums podcast ever coming back? I fucking wish it would. I wish it would. They're going through some stuff right now. I, I, you know, I tell them every year. Every time I talk to them, like that's what I want. And I don't know if you can even listen to them on. Uh, right now I think they took it down. If you guys don't know, Bums is one of my some of my friends back home in Washington, Oregon, created a a hip hop albums review podcast titled Bums, <laughs> and they would rate them with the cheek scale, with two cheek, one cheek. If it suck, had a big butthole. And they would go back and they'd, they really do a lot of like older hip hop albums, like a lot of Nas yeah. and like just some just good hip hop. And um, they would they review it and it was the funniest podcast. Interesting too. Very interesting. Very informative. I got, I listened to so much more hip hop because of them. I'm like, wait, I've never listened to that whole album. I listened to a song or two from, and it was really cool. So if you can, if it's out there, shout out to Bums. Please come back. Like, yeah, yeah. We, we shout out it. to Bums. Like, Cliff was good. I've had Dan on the podcast. They had me on their podcast. We reviewed um, a tribe called Quest, their most recent album. Yeah. And I, <laughs> gave I two gave cheeks. it. Yeah. I, I absolutely gave it two cheeks. I mean, yeah. and uh, I think Cliff gave it one and a half cheeks. And I almost, we almost fought. We almost dueled. <laughs> <laughs> and was fought to the death over that, yeah. but it, it's it was a good it was a good it was a great podcast you know and you know Demarco pulled this up I think there are only I think there's a million podcasts out there and I think that only like a hundred thousand or something are actually active and I'm totally wrong on those numbers but I'm, I'm, I'm going to say I am that currently Demar- looking okay Sounds cool good, though. So, so the, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep rolling with this until Demarco corrects me. So, I'm not giving up on this dream. No way. This is too fun to do. Well, how hard? Well, give, give me like how hard is it? Give it someone like you know why? Why is it easy to kind of start a podcast? But what takes it to keep it maintained to keep it going? Because well, I feel like let, you know, a lot of consistency. So yeah, this is a good question. I, I'm I'm excited to answer. So the so reason before that you start so though, m- your answer. Uh, the no, the closest numbers they have is from 2018. Uh, mm-hmm. The total number of podcasts are there's. Let's see, there are 18.5 million episodes on 525,000 active shows. On, okay, so that's, oh, that's on Apple Podcasts. So if it's on Apple Podcasts, it's probably everywhere. Okay, so so 500 and so how many act? There's only 520,000 active podcasts. 525,000. Well, a little off. Yeah, but how many podcast? How many podcasts are out there? Oh, fucking! I don't know. Let's we'll see if you can find that. Uh, I was totally I'm, wrong. But anyways, okay, I'll go on that. Oh, here's uh, <clears throat> there. Uh, this is from April of this year. Really. One million active podcasts, thirty million podcast episodes. That so that's up from that's doubled from 2018. Uh, Good. Hundred languages. Yeah, looks like about a, a hundred, a, one million active podcasts, including Damn us. Damn it, I was completely fucking wrong. Anyways, don't give up on your dreams, kids. But um, <laughs> don't listen. This to me. is why. This is why. Pod. There's a lot of podcasts. The barriers to entry are low. Like it's low. You can you can get a an okay setup for like two hundred bucks, probably even cheaper. Okay, don't don't. Don't I fucking feel that look, Demarco? Don't sass me right now. Um, <laughs> to sound for. to sound good, that's way more expensive. And we just started sounding good, <clears throat> but the barriers oh, wow. to entry are low. No, we've been sounding. Yeah, come on, <laughs> you know what I mean. But um, but to to but to keep grinding and to keep putting out content. Like we're 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 rolling up on sixty shows, which is fucking nothing. I need to make. I'm gonna. That's nothing. You know the people that I look up to, Jr. The Jre. They're at seventeen hundred shows. You know the China History Podcast. I think six or seven hundred shows. Um, Dan Carlin. Not as many shows, but the, each show is like six hours long. Like 
that over like 10 years you know but 10 you guys, we're talking these about are the years. people that are going like full in though like that's their fucking job right like yeah that's, i mean that's that, what like, we're trying to do that's what we're trying to do dude we're the we're at the we're at the very we're at the infancy of the show like the one thing that we talk about when we have our meetings and we have meetings is we're in it for the long haul mm-hmm. it, we don't care if it takes us 20 years to make it that's how long it's gonna fucking take, but we're never gonna give up. Dude, you guys we're just gonna get keep sponsored going. by Flashlight, like Joe Rogan. Did. <laughs> Start off by, I get some fucking Flashlights on the pod early on, so we can, we Welcome can go to back the Rick's to the Mind remember? Podcast, sponsored yeah, this uh, week by but... Trump.Eagle.AmericaFirst.com. <laughs> right, exactly. Dude, get I would plug. love it if Donald dude, Trump get was a, a sponsor. Butt, get a butt plug sponsor, dude. Like that's what you need to do is get something just real quick. <laughs> no, I'll tell you and what then sponsor. Just go from there. I, what sponsor I want is I want I want us to be sponsored. By the 52 gallon oil drum of lube that you can buy on Amazon. Because then. Shout out 52 gallon bottle of lube. Have you not seen this, Rick? No. So, I no, forget. You're it. not a member of the internet. I'll, I'll put it in the chat so you can experience oh, this. Oh, speaking of the internet, this I actually want to talk to you guys real quick. Is Did you guys, you know, the whole crisis going on with the internet shutting down? When I, internet, I mean, Facebook, because a lot of people think Facebook is internet. But how crazy is that? Like, what a time to be alive where Instagram, WhatsApp, and Facebook go down for a few hours and it fucking just is one of the biggest news stories in our generation. People were losing their fucking minds. Um, people were saying businesses, small businesses rely on it and all that. And then it's just so crazy that like before, like what, 20, 25 years ago, we didn't even have the internet. And now like you can't access a website for more than six hours. People are losing their fucking minds. So I, I actually, that's a good thing to, to discuss because I didn't know. I, well, that's not true. I, I read about it this morning, like Facebook, Instagram. I didn't know WhatsApp went down. They went down. Oh, yeah. Facebook owns WhatsApp. And, and I, you know, I, I personally didn't notice, but I honestly, like if I was the U.S. government, that would be my number one thing would the, be to bring it down. That, the like lady that was the whistleblower from <clears throat> the thing about like their uh, all their algorithms and the um, their internal studies about uh, Instagram's effects on teenage girls, she was literally testifying in front of Congress today. So Yeah. So actually before, while you guys were chilling on Google Meets, I was... Um... Mark Zuckerberg just made a huge post about it. Like he went on like a huge five fucking page rant and just Gross. saying like he mentioned he mentions the uh, one little detail about them going off line, but he yeah. was saying that like, did he Instagram did he leave out the good. did he leave out the details about how while uh, Facebook was quote unquote down that literally everything was down, including their DNS records and everything. So they were active. Somebody inside Facebook was actively going through their servers and deleting everything because like everything was down including like all of their infrastructure systems that controlled like door keys and everything yeah. like there so. like i can't emphasize this enough you delete dns is like dns is the right. lifeblood of the internet if you do not have dns records you have no way to route anywhere their dns records were were wiped and I assume they have backups and they were trying to retrieve those, but you wipe DNS, you wipe Facebook off the face of existence. It no longer exists, period. Let's do it. I, I mean, I would love it, honestly. Like, and I love my yeah. favorite part about yesterday, besides the fact that they locked them out and were obviously doing some pretty hinky shit to hide, hide some crime. Uh, poor little Zucky lost $7 billion of imaginary value. Yeah, you should. Hey, if you can go on the Facebook real quick and pull up his post, and maybe you can highlight some oh. parts because he just like he just like posted right when we were getting on. Is he like I Mark Zuckerberg's like his personal Facebook page or his yeah like, public yeah, just, one? yeah personal page? Yeah, I think okay. it's just Mark. Maybe it's Facebook. I can't remember. But oh, here it is. It was, here it is. Uh, he oh my lord, this is like a fucking dissertation. So wait, well, yeah. you were yeah. Do and keep siphoning through that, but I wanted to get on something. You were talking about what he wrote, and it was just about like was he. He was slamming the 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 lady that testified yeah, the before Congress. So he, he mentions a, like it's like one paragraph, like oh yeah, we went down yesterday, but like who the fuck is this bitch? Think she is telling us how we run our job and this and oh you think Instagram is bad for twelve year old self esteem? Well, actually, guess what? It's actually good for you. Know, he's just like, <laughs> pretty he's rich like coming an from asshole. an android, really. <laughs> yeah, 
it's such a, dude. I've got I his post. It. I can't find. I, I'm gonna run through it. I'm trying to find a link to it. Just put it in the chat. But yeah, I'll keep running through. Yeah, you dude. guys go. Yeah, but that, dude, that's that's. I mean, it's it's. I I gotta say that I'm very partial towards. Um, I'm heavily influenced by that. The, whatever anti-social media side is like, I think it's real. I think it's bad for you. It's like it's this, it's this double-edged sword, and it's 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 hard to say. Like I I think it's really bad for your mental health. I think that um, people get too caught up in it. People want to showcase their lives, but I mean, I also for for all of that, I also think there's a lot of good in it. I think that it's it's one of those things to where you can self-select. Like I think that. I think that we all live in echo chambers, right? It's just like, what echo are you hearing? Like, I've surrounded myself with very positive, supportive, and loving, like, friends from all different walks of life, all different backgrounds, all different races. And then on social media, I only follow, like, badass humans. Like, I only follow pretty much a bad i got rid of all the thirst traps because i don't think that that is necessarily indicative of like me having a do you hear that jen okay yeah do like a that? good relationship well i mean uh, girls are told that they're not enough every day and i don't need to like i still have like two or three thirst traps i'm not gonna lie to you guys okay <laughs> i will not lie i see but i had a lot i had a lot more and it was i just didn't think it was fair to her but then I mean, she looks at the thirst traps with me you know i we, we have full disclosure here but but at the same time, like I do, I just think it's it's I think it's a I think it's a hindrance on a lot of people's personal development, and I think that it it traps people and keeps them on the couch. Those are my thoughts. What are yours, Andrew? Yeah, it, it's it's a drug. It's a drug. I think my view on drugs is the same way on social media. I think it's there's a time and a place for them, and it can be really helpful or fun, and but they can also be very dangerous too at the same time. Um, like. I think if we, I think social media should go back to when it was just only available on your laptop. You had to go home and set down your computer, like dial up. But once it was able in your pocket and it was always on, you could never get away with it. That's when the addiction really started coming in because then you have that phantom phone where you think your phone's vibrating or you see a notification and then they make it like a slot machine. You know, like everyone saw the social network where and it's right there. You can never get away from it. You know, even when yeah. Instagram was down yesterday, like I didn't realize, like I would just do it, like I'm not even thinking about it. I'm like, oh shit, it's down. Like, and so you get addicted to that kind of but a rush. What? What? Could you just not get on it? Like I did. See, this is the thing. Yeah, they're not. Refresh. They're back. They're back. Like, yeah, their backgrounds. Their back end servers were down, so it like wouldn't refresh. Like the way Facebook works is it's uh it's like Twitter where it's like kind of an app, but mostly a service where it will download. Uh, the framework of the website and the UI and everything into the um, the cache of your browser, and then it will page its servers to get updated information to place in it. So, like when Twitter's down, you can go to the Twitter website because you have it saved in your cache, but then nothing will come up because it has right, no server no, to call there's home. There's no new thing, but um, but yeah. So it's social media is one of those things where it's a huge time suck. But it could also be valuable too. Like, how many people in this world, say from about 2013 to now, have careers or may have done something because of social media? Like, probably this podcast. This podcast will benefit from social media. A lot of things could benefit from social media. A lot of good things happen from social media. I think a lot of things when we started doing the 75 hard, they would kind of stem from social media or something like that. So yeah. There are good. There are good things from it, but it's it's a drug. It's an addictive drug, and then people just waste their time. A lot of shit talk. A lot of shit talk on there, you know. It's easy. Keyboard warriors, like our whole, everyone says America is divided right now. It's because it's so easy to go on a keyboard and see something that you might disagree with or you might like and you go, you stupid fucking bitch, you're an idiot. Listen, <laughs> you know, but if someone says on your face, you'd be like, oh, maybe I disagree. Or actually, never mind. But you can just say whatever you want, be whoever you want. I think that's kind of where the thing where you have no no consequences for what you say. Um, so I've 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 parsed through um, <clears throat> Mr. Sugar Mountain's uh, post, and uh, 
boy, I fucking hate this guy. What a scumbag this piece of shit is. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. You, you want charged? It. Here's the charged leftist take. Billionaire cries that he got commit, caught, caught committing crime. He's basically saying, like, <laughs> you know, like you said, he's like, this bitch threw us out. It's like, okay, you got found out. He's trying to say, like, you know, he's using, a, first of all, he's using, like, internal lingo and uh and acronyms and shit for their systems that absolutely no one's gonna know unless you google them which i did um then so then he he wants to say like you know uh we spent the past 24 hours debriefing on how we can strengthen our systems against this kind of failure and then goes on to talk about how facebook is such a good company and we wouldn't put you know we 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 regret or, or or not regret but like we we deny that we prioritize profit over safety which is a fucking lie they're an advertising company they make all of their money from selling personal data to, to al algorithmic personal data to advertisers which is why advertising is so good now is because they have everyone's personal data wrapped up in a nice bow and handed to them um and then like they deny that you know like they're trying to claim that they created um the, I forget what is it like the civic civic unity or something panel that the the whistleblower claims that she she was the head of the panel or she was like high up on it and she claims that they created it right before the election in 20 uh when was that 2020 20, and uh or 2019 and then or no 2020 and then uh they got rid of it as soon as the election was over because they were like okay great we don't need to do this anymore um and it's and then they you know and she talked about how their algorithm was being programmed to take down specific viewpoints and all the conservatives have been you know crying and moaning that it's been you know white people are being oppressed because facebook is taking down our false claims about vaccines when in reality it's actually taking down everyone it's not it's taking down conservatives but it's also taking down leftists and the only posts it doesn't seem to touch are your typical kind of like left of center neoliberals that run the show which is they neoliberals are essentially they're just like the bootlickers for billionaires um it, they, he's they're just denying everything it's it's all bullshit he's he's so up his yeah, own well, ass even if he one has one he's an android see, so yeah one thing you see like when someone is guilty or who are guilty they come out so totally defensive like mm -hmm. he's really like why we even have that post you know like i feel like well dude I'm here's, into like that i just think that there was a lot of like intellectual capital you know leaked in this and you know he's angry i mean this man <laughs> yeah, he's, he's pissed off because he, I mean, he lost on, seven me, billion in a day let, let me talk let me talk though this man this is a great man okay Rick. this man this man created a i mean he created a an amazing platform to connect people to one another. Rick. And Rick, he, he made an he, he no, made no, a no, website so done. you could rate hot chicks that you want to fuck at Harvard. That's what I'm, he did. I'm not I'm not done yet. Let me let me continue. <laughs> this is a this is a great man. This if it wasn't for this man, you know, think about it. He bought Instagram. He optimized it. Okay. He He's it. optimized Facebook. Okay. He is a billionaire. He is a charitable man. And and he he's looking out for our best interests. And I support him. I a hundred percent I'm coming out in I'm, <laughs> I'm coming out in support <sighs> of, of Daddy Z. What's up? I you mean You want that sweet, sweet sugar. You know? No, I mean, I think yeah. he's a great man. So, what no, do you think? Daddy Zuck, Daddy Zuck. Oh, please Zuck me, Daddy. <laughs> billionaires just fascinate me because, like, they are like a different breed. I think once you have that much money, your 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 mind changes. I'm personally you're, convinced you can't be a billionaire without being a psychopath to some level. Right. Got yeah, Elon Musk of the world. You know, the people who like you know the Jeff Bezos writes a fucking giant dildo in space, and he's like, fucking yeah, you know, and. It's crazy, yeah. I think once you have that much money, you can't be a normal person. You can't relate. So when he thinks he's, you know, doing all this, he really doesn't even have any idea. Like he's, they're not. They, like, have you seen that video? I think uh, Bill Gates was on Ellen, and he had no idea how much a fucking gallon of milk costs. You know, these guys yeah, are I so out of this world. They don't even know what the fuck is like, how to act normal or do anything because they have so much money. They don't understand. Like a normal person. A hundred dollars is a lot of money to a fucking average Joe Blow. 
Dude, these guys could fucking wipe their ass with a fucking two hundred thousand dollars and wouldn't even notice, you know? Oh yeah, yeah. He said, I think uh, the the interview you're referring to. I think they asked him how much a, a gallon of milk costs. He's like, I think uh, twenty bucks, twenty dollars. Like, yeah. yeah, it's twenty dollars. There's a bunch of items. There's a bunch yeah. of items. Like, how much does this cost? And he's like, oh fuck, you know. What's a loaf of bread? <laughs> Sixty bucks? I don't know. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know. God. And Zuckerberg's like know. the worst kind of billionaire too. Because he like likes to play this game like he's just this totally normal dude that likes to go windsurfing and wear five dollar t shirts and shorts he buys at Walmart and live in a normal house when he's worth more than God could imagine. You know? Yeah, I have a question. What do you think do you think it's do you think it's respectable or fucking piece of shit when you see hear these billionaires, yeah, driving fucking little Priuses and yeah, wearing $10 oh, t-shirts. Yeah. Fuck them. It's, like, it's guillotine season, baby. Let's w- the world no, would be a better I, I, place without any billionaire alive. Okay. Well, no, 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 that, well, I'm, not saying that. I'm, I'm saying like, like if you're a billionaire, fucking dress like one. Fuck. Yeah, I want exactly. you wearing, yeah, I want you wearing fucking some expensive shit. I want you driving. I think that's way cooler than if, you know, you're Warren Buffett's fucking house only cost a thousand dollars or some shit like that. Like, nah, dude, fucking ball out, dude. Fucking buy a building, you know. Yeah, it's like I know, I'll give up. Peter Thiel some credit. He's got some drip. Like the man knows how to hang a suit. Like Bill Gates looks like I, I don't even know what he, he I mean, he looks like what Mark Zuckerberg's gonna look like in forty years. You know? He's just an emaciated nerd. I I I like the I like people like, I like figures like Warren Buffett I really do that really because to him I don't really think it's about the money it's about the game it's about mm-hmm. winning it's mm-hmm. about the stock market right and being smarter than everyone else and you know like I enjoy that I, I enjoy the guys that that are flashy I unlike Demarco love that there are billionaires <laughs> I I think it's cool I don't think you should I think that money creates innovation i think that if it wasn't the fact that you could make more money than than god himself or whatever you know for uh i i like that that incentivize incentivizes people to work hard and um you know anyone that says that we should tax the rich is an idiot because you can't tax the rich because it's cheaper for them to hire an accountant and a lawyer to get out of t- paying taxes. Well, so. also to add to that, you can't tax the rich because they're actually not that rich. They aren't. No, they aren't money's... really billionaire. It's all bullshit valuation. And the way that yeah, they, no. it, it's fascinating that I recently like was reading about. Uh, it was when uh, a few months ago. It was. An, I'll find the article and put it in the show notes. It was about specifically like Bill Gates and his involvement with Jeffrey Epstein and that kind of class of people. And none of these guys actually have a whole lot of money like they have way more money than any of us like they're they're genuinely like unbelievably wealthy like they have a few hundred million dollars and then they've got a ton of profit or uh, uh, like property and assets and everything but everything is just fake credit it's all it's all fake it's like money is fake it's all okay, that's, that's, what, that's what 21 year old andrew realized when he was doing mushrooms was like who was uh, i just into- saw it. <laughs> Trey Crowder, Trey Crowder, who's a he goes by the uh, liberal redneck. He made a good point. He's like, you know what, you know, thirty-two trillion dollars looks like. I don't know. No one does because it's not real. Money's fake. You know, especially when okay, you get up to so, that those numbers. So, but I will say this: like when people are like, why doesn't Bezos just cash out and f- end world hunger? Like those people are dumb. <laughs> that's not going to work because most no of his well, well, no, 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 no. That's not it. Let's say he does have an interest because Bezos is also a great man. Um, <laughs> let's this is this one. All of his wealth is tied up in Amazon, and if he suddenly decides like I'm cashing out, oh, he crashes. That the stock company price. crashes. the 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 evaluation of that company goes way way down. Everyone's like, why is he getting out of Amazon? So like he can't necessarily do that. He can cash out. Some he could cash out a few. A few thousand shares make a few hundred million dollars and be fine. But if he cashes, if he removes all of his position, then it's chaos and pandemonium. So he can't do that. Like he's tied to that company. That's a part of it. So that's why a lot of these billionaires can't solve world hunger because their empires would be would would go into self destruct mode. Right, but then that's that also how much, how much money is enough money though, Rick? How, like how much for you, Rick Brooks? If like if you said, all right, give me what's the number where you could think like. You're cool. More. Like, how more. much? What, what do you think? More. Whatever number you come up with, I need more. I need more. I need. I need at least enough 
two. I need at least enough of a of a of a of a mega economy. So take China and the United States combine economy, combined them. So I need the, both of their GDPs. All right, I need enough money to to fund uh, have a standing army. Uh, you know, I just need more. You know, I need I need all of it. I need all of the money, and then I'm not going to stop working. I'm just. <laughs> I'm just not being facetious, but uh, I don't know. I don't have a number. I mean, I wrote down on a piece of paper. I will have a hundred million dollars by the time I'm. I think I think it's like fifty five or something. So uh, I gotta get on that. But um, I feel I felt like a hundred milli. I think that that would be like cool. Mm-hmm. It would be cool to to have that much money. I, I, you know, that way there you're pretty much. There's not a lot of problems on the planet Earth that a hundred million dollars isn't going to solve. Yeah, Joe you know? Rogan always says to have enough to have fuck you money, and I don't know what that number is. But that's what I want. Uh, I just want to have my money. That's that's it. He I, had that before though. Like he had that. Was, that was he had that. I feel like you, just, you once you once you cross it into the like what like twelve figures. I think you're you're in fuck you money. Once you have like yeah. yeah, at least like like I would say you need to be like at least above like a hundred million. Ten milli. Like ten milli. If you're like yeah. if you have like twenty, twenty five million and then yeah. like let's say like six or seven of that's pretty liquid, like you have real estate, you have your cash flowing, you don't need to work, you're you're self insured, right? You're fucking self insured. Uh, that is a level to where you can pretty much tell people to fuck off. Like you just do whatever it is you want to do. If you've got enough money to potentially have a jet, like no, I wouldn't say buy. I could say, you could say rent or charter jets on the reg and not like that doesn't hurt you. That's a good place to be. You're pretty much free. Uh, and that's something that's important with finance to understand is like not necessarily what your number is, but like you need to kind of look like the lifestyle that you want to have. You should look at how much it costs. Like how much does it cost to charter a jet? Like how much money would you need if that's what you want to do? If you want to take that, that, that's that, that picture of you getting on that plane for social media, for Instagram, you need to know how much that costs. So you can adjust your, your goals in your life accordingly. Like have a plan to get there. A lot of people just dream, but they don't plan, you know? They don't look into things. You, what about Jet Set? Do you guys know about Jet Set? You can rent private jets um, on a, like a essentially like a backhaul. Let's say they have a client. Let's say let's say Cardone, Grant Cardone, is flying to Atlanta, and he's like, "I'm going to be here for a few days. I'm going to lease my jet out. You could you could book a seat or a few seats on that jet as it flies back to whichever route it goes. Like, there's a lot of like cool companies like that that you can look into once you kind of become a high net worth individual. Yes, I have looked into this because I won't do that. <laughs> well, and this all brings goes back to the moral of the story is fuck them kids. That's wow. that's what we bring. Tie that shit in a knot, and that little bow, and saying, "Yeah." See, if I if I had billionaire money, my my honestly, my goal in life is to make as much fucking money as I possibly can and give every cent of it away. Like oh shut the no, fuck for real, up dude. absolutely You're such a liar. no I swear to God I swear to God like cross myself hope to die I swear to God I want to make shit. no for real I want to make like I need some of that money I want to make as much money as I can and keep like I don't know a few like ten twenty thirty million dollars for myself oh. and family okay and put it in okay. trust so it will grow and keep growing and stay the and just pay us out in interest like. None of us need more than like I don't know. I feel like an unreasonable amount of money per annum is like three hundred thousand dollars a year. I don't even know what I. I don't even know what to do if I made literally. Literally, if I made two thousand dollars a month, I have no clue how I would use it. Like, oh, trust me, I mean, I I'd, I'd find it. Like, I'm very poor. It's $2, it's $2, hard a to be a nice. No, I know exactly. Like, if I made five grand a month, like fuck, I'd be living like oh, dude, ridiculous. I really think you. I think no, you need to look into your finances and see the, where your the, money goes. Listen, the more you make, no. the more you spend, and then pretty soon it's it's just little things. And then like, because yeah. I remember, I remember one time where I was like, man, if I make a hundred thousand dollars a year, that that's fucking perfect. We're done. And now we're kind of we're there, and you're like, oh shit, like what? Are, like, where's it going? You know? And I think that, and we're not living low. Actually, we're living a lot better. You know, you can sure. go on a little more tri- trips. Oh, speaking of trips, dude, shout out to fucking Denver, Colorado, dude. Fucking, it was just there. There's no place like it in fucking America. I'll tell you that right now. Um, I need to go back. If you, 
haven't been anyone listen go to denver rick that that's the spot people people don't realize it's 300 days of sunshine a year it's fucking beautiful it was a good time we were at weddings what weather was amazing brews food everything no denver's a shithole um it's not nice don't, dude. Why are you putting Denver out on? But you know, people listen. The to secrets the show. out, dude. The secret. The secrets out, dude. I was just there. Secrets out. The airport's there. creepy dude. as fuck. Oh yeah, Illuminati Airport. Dude, oh dude, my then, god. Another Go thing. Not that I'm jumping around because I was saying my my other utopia before Denver was Bend, Oregon. And did you hear what happened in Bend? Ah. Oh, no, dude. Did you hear? Did you hear this story? No, I didn't. But Bend's a shithole. Don't go there. Yeah, well, I guess it, it, fucking there's some straight up 2021 style Emmett Till kind of shit going on, dude, in Bend, Oregon. Fucking not to bring the bummer cast down, but a 21 year old black dude just was fucking oh shit shot shot dead cold because uh, he was talking to some dude's g- white girlfriend and the guy just fucking shot. <sighs> fucking Oregon, god damn it! Why is it that oh, I so I left terrible. the deep south <laughs> for here? What? Mm, yep. Yeah. This oh Jesus this is real. Christ. This is real, yeah. This just happened too, like murder, manslaughter, and guy, assault, and unlawful use of a weapon. Jesus Christ! Bullshit, wait, man. why did he guy, shoot? Why, wait, why did this? He was why? talking. So this guy was at the bar, and I know some people in Ben, and I I heard the story because they were kind of out there. This guy was he just moved from California, young guy. He been out there before, loved the area. Is out partying, trying to meet people, talking to this lady. I don't. He no idea who these people are. Doesn't I even realize that she had a man or anything, dude. The lady's boyfriend gets upset, and people are saying that he was really more upset that he was talking to a to a black guy. Oh no! I was gonna say they have the yeah. guy's mugshot in the in the article that I posted, and he mm. looks like he would say a hard R. I'm, you know. Yeah, he, he <laughs> looks. He definitely looks like the master race. People people are saying like like if this guy was a white guy talking to this guy's girlfriend, it maybe fight or something like that. But the fact, that, and I guess they. Who oh, would fight just because beat, somebody's talking someone to your beat girlfriend? The, someone beat the shit out of this guy. Yeah, what happened? Good. But um, he uh, shot this dude. And I guess the guy who shot him, the white dude that shot this guy, like hadn't even had like no alcohol level in his blood system or anything like that. So, so you can't say he was drunk or. He's just a racist I think it was kind of. Yeah, shot this guy. So. And that, and it freaks me out because we, we've been to Ben so many times. Like I've been to Ben going out and stuff and. Uh, that could have been us, man. It's it's crazy. And Dude, yeah. I'm I'm white and I I'm fucking oh, don't scared you. to leave the cities. No, you no, for real. Be fine. For real. You'll no, be but fine. Ha- have you been to like fucking like Sherwood or Get Newburgh or shit? You just roll uh, down yes, the I street have. and they can smell the queer on you. Oh, dude! <laughs> it's like they f- the, the last oh, time I drove. God. No, for real. The last time I drove through, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, Sherwood. It, there was like literally just fucking proud boys hanging out on the corner. Dude, trust me, you'll be fine, Demarco. Ah. You're, you're gonna be all right. I don't know. Be ju- I don't know. I'm no, just a little you, too, you're, you know, for them. You no, know. you're not. Okay, you're gonna be just fine. I promise you, you'll be fine. You don't. Have, you you know what? And, and this is why I know you're gonna be fine. You just mm. kind of blend in, dude. You just kind of blend in with everyone in this. I don't blend in, in though. <laughs> That's yes, my problem. <laughs> okay, let me no. Th- let me let me explain. I might blend it physical <laughs> appearance. I might blend in, but the minute I open my mouth or the minute I start moving, people are just like, "There's a fat. Get him." You know. <laughs> you're you're not. Listen, I love you to death, but like you know, you listen. You got a beard. You know, I look like every dude in Oregon. No, for you're, sure. You're you know. you're white male. You have a wife. Like you know, you're f- gonna be all right. Yeah, I have a wife. We both look gay as fuck. Like <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, but you're <laughs> but you're still together. You know, yeah, and you'll be gay fine. there. Is that a, <laughs> you said that purpose? They're still together. We're two gays. We're we're, we're just we're, you know we're very gonna, happy. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a whole. We're not gonna unpack <laughs> this on this show. You can't do that though. Like you. You're in a heterosexual relationship. Yeah. Like you're not, you're I'm, in a, I'm in a straight passing relationship. <sighs> okay, I don't even know what this means, man. Welcome, I'm very confused. You need right to join now. the world, my friend. It's it's current year. No, I'm happy. I'm, I'm happy. But yeah, you know, I, I I don't I don't know, man. That's that's very disheartening. It's very sad. I'm I'm sad that that happened. Um, I it's interesting, man. Like I still like to believe in my crazy non theory, like that racism isn't real which is insane but you know i've explained this on the show a few times like 
I'm not going to let anyone, I'm not going to give anybody power over me. Let's say they, they drop the hard R. Like, I'll laugh at you. Like, I'm not going to let you dictate my day. The only person that's going to change my reality is me. And that's how... So they fucking you know, shoot you. Yeah. Yeah, that's not ideal. <laughs> um, I think <laughs> it's definitely not ideal. Want, if you would like my analysis, you are, you are a, very, a very intelligent person. You're a very kind person. You've also grown up around like a like fairly middle class i think and like you know you're black so you've gone and seen shit but you work in corporate stuff there's a lot of fucking shitty people because the problem is they see you and they're not gonna they're not gonna do it unless you try to try something they see me and i'm the white dude and they're gonna come up and they're gonna start talking that shit to me like i saw how somehow i'm gonna participate you know and you do look like you would I, yeah no i know i i totally look like i would drop a hard r like i look like yeah, my dad unfortunately 100%. we used to go camping in northern idaho oh, well no no no. i look like my dad because yeah up by court we literally we were we were outside of Coeur d'Alene, like out in the fucking woods and this is pre ruby ridge we'll, 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 we'll be quiet about the, oh yeah geez, yeah pre ruby cool. ridge my dad is like my dad looks like me he's bald shaved head he didn't have a beard but he had a mustache and he was wearing Dude, are like. You, are you sure he wasn't going to those meetings? I had Dude, no, I for real. That's where I'm going. That. He was wearing camo <laughs> pants because we were out camping, uh, and like my mom and I were in the grocery store buying something. And this checkout lady, she's being real friendly, chatting with mom and stuff. And then dad walks up, just like, "Hey, how's it going?" And they're like, "Nazi," because <laughs> yeah, they th- they legit was, thought he was a skinhead. Because I mean, there, he was yeah. shaved head, but like, yeah. See, that's that's been my experience. Is that I've just been around a lot of people that are racist because of the places I've lived and they're just like, Hey, you want to be racist with me? And I'm like, no, why would I? (laughs) It's like, no. Yeah. 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 It's just just crazy. Like, you know, cause I I was just in Bend a few months ago and we were out doing the same thing. And like, that was one of my first observations was like, damn, Bend is really white. Like it's really white. There's, there was like no diversity. There's no Mexicans hardly any Asians. There was no Asian. It was just white people. And not saying there was bad. Like it was fine. Like we had a good time and everything, but Ben need I think anywhere needs diversity. Like we were so focused on the years, you know, during segregation and this and white utopias and white flight and this and the black people can't stay here. And people kinda of get in their bubble. So then we have all these people who all look alike and there's no other cultures you get to know people then you you do when you see someone who doesn't look like you you do get a little a little weird and and kind of what you're saying rick maybe people aren't racist but when they see someone different than them or who they think is different than them people act weird and they just do weird crazy shit yeah it'd be better if they're all included and to be fair right to be fair like i'm a very generous (laughs) i don't get offended easy at all And I've definitely had, you know, instances where I'm very patient and understanding. Um, I mean, I'll speak to, (laughs) I'll tell that, I'll tell it off air, but, um, you know. Just change the name, tell it on air. I just, I just don't like, um, I hate talking about race because it bores me. Because the way I grew up, like, I grew up in a multicultural family. There were, you know, 13 of us. Like, I, I, I didn't know that there was any difference until, like, the world to- told me otherwise, right? Like, mm, same, it's same. Just, it's, yeah, yeah, you, very, yeah. Then that's, I think that's one of the reasons why we're friends is we both have family members that are black, white. Um, there's primarily black and white. Yeah, Mexican. Um, yeah, I've got Asian people. My, like, early, siblings, yeah. like, yeah, siblings that are this, yeah. like, the same, right? Like, so, like, it's like it's exhausting and then like i particularly like don't enjoy talking about race like with uh, just anyone that bores me just no and demarco i love you i I didn't say a thing like white white people when they're like bring up like discriminate i'm like i just don't really want to have this conversation i'd much rather white people don't get discriminated against shit come on (laughs) The worst thing I mean, that you, that will I ever know, happen. Earlier in our conversation, we're alluding to being afraid of going. Yeah, to not because I'm white, but because I'm queer. That's why. You're. Uh, 
I am, but- dude. I am. That's the thing. Like, I. That's why I'm afraid. Not because of race. I'm. I'm. Okay, I'm but- as like. I have a tan. That's 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 as dark as I get. You know. Okay, but like to but to Italians say you're- are white people and white people suck. But to say that you're queer, right? right. Like to me, right? That would generally mean that you're either in a same sex relationship or like maybe are I don't know, like but like it's well, I mean, I'm bisexual. I'm bisexual, so that means I am I am queer, but just because you are in a not in a a, a like a same sex relationship doesn't mean that you can't be queer. Like two people two mm-hmm. bisexual people who are married are still just as gay as they were before they just happen to be in a relationship with an opposite sex person uh, okay but like i don't like it's not like you're walking down the street holding the hand of another man well no but having experienced shit like this these types of people can smell it like it, they just know it's like they have the best gaydar of anybody because they they use it for hunting you know okay it's it's I mean, that's that's what it is it's, it it has nothing to do with like the whole thing about like oh white people there's a white genocide white people that, fuck that that's bullshit <laughs> that is absolute <laughs> fucking bullshit the most discrimination that i have gotten is gone to an italian deli and they didn't put enough pepperoncini on my sandwich okay <laughs> because my family might be from naples and not calibria you know yeah you know, it's fucking, it's fucking stupid. Mayo. Yeah, it's fucking stupid. You know, and it's like <laughs> the the and I I one hundred percent agree with you about the race thing because race is a bullshit concept. Like America yeah, has this obsession yeah. with race because here's the secret: America doesn't have a race problem. They use race to try to divide people because if we uh, actually stuck to class, maybe we would actually can could do something you know yes that's kind of always been my thing because i'm i just like that situation we'll unpack everything else later but um because <laughs> i we we've gone back and forth about that the other s- subject because sure. i just it's so it's i don't know I it's whatever feelings. it's I don't like have, i don't you know i love you oh yeah no i don't i don't take any privacy it's just you're not gay so you wouldn't get it it's fine you don't have to be no, gay. No one has to be gay. I know, but no it's one's like, trying no to make you really, gay. Rick. But no one's really gonna know because you're like, you know what I'm like. Okay, but because that's yeah, like, we'll unpack that you're, later. You're you're trying to approach homophobia, bigotry, racism from like the perspective of who you are, like a kind, good, genuinely ethical, moral person. These people are inherently unethical and unmoral because you can't be a moral or ethical person and hate somebody for. A completely non-important and like you can't hate people for a non-factor right how can you hate so somebody because there's no fuck oh, dude you got more melanin in your skin fuck you you know yeah. it's just like the hey you're gay fuck you you know it's like the, it's you like love somebody fuck yeah you. it's like childhood yeah. bullshit like you know but the, i mean the jokes on the middle school bullies because like you know they were right but you know it's like i should have listened to you such a long time ago yeah yeah this is true well i wish you well in that experiment i'm not going to sherwood or newburgh i'll tell you that much dude there's nothing wrong with those sherwoods and wine country yeah but have you seen haven't you seen all the stuff about Newburgh, Newburgh? newburgh yeah but haven't you seen all the stuff about newburgh in the last like month two months Listen, for number one, you both should know I do not pay attention to the news. Dude, and honestly, okay, while so, we're on this, hold on, while ahead. we're on this subject, fuck you, Andrew, for bringing that news <laughs> thing up. I'm depressed now, and I don't want to know anything that you well, have to we, say. I, here we dude, go. I here live we in go. a glorious world. Well, you live in a beautiful world. And to be world. fair, to, to, Marco, to like, listen, like, I'm, I'm living in Toledo, Ohio right now, and there's a you know, high, high African-American community, too, and... They're, they can be pretty homophobic too. It's not only homophobia; it just goes to a proud boy saying it. You know, like I think homophobia is different because it can be black community, white community. You know, like it's such a old style thinking. Like you think, oh, I'm around black people who are maybe used to being marginalized against, but then they see you're gay or queer, then they're gonna be like, who the fuck is this? It's it's that, that's kind of thing where like you know, if you're home, you can get it. Anywhere across the board, there could be Asians or homophobic. And see, that's uh, the that's the thing is like I have like you know when they talk about privilege or whatever, I can pass this straight 
all day long. And, you know, and me and my wife can pass this straight all day long, all we want. So that like, we're very lucky that way. But like, I have friends who are like, cannot, even if they tried, you know, because of just whatever reason. And it's only because these people just want to hate people and just want to fuck people up because they can't deal with whatever they don't understand. I mean, that's totally true. That's a good point. Like, just because you're, I mean, there's a lot of bisexual women that like mm-hmm. marry uh, dudes and, you know, exactly. Just because a bisexual woman's married to a straight person doesn't mean that suddenly yeah. they're not gay anymore. They're just as gay as there's they were lot. before, you know? Mm-hmm. And there's definitely like, I mean, that's, that's definitely a, 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 that world, right? There's a lot of hypocritical mm-hmm. thing. And, you know, I'm not going to lie. I am part of that. I'm working on it. But oh, it's I mean, like, there's, oh, a, dude, there's a whole your girl's hell of, bisexual. Fuck yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, there's but a whole like, hell of a lot of gatekeeping you know, in LGBT circles, too, against people who are bisexual or people who are trans, but not trans in the right way or any, yeah. and you know what? any bullshit you I, can come up with. Hey, we were talking I, about that, Rick. Can we just bring that up? Because I'm dude, still is, on that one. Fucking can no, we are <laughs> not. We are not. We are not gonna discuss that. I have no what idea what we talked about. about. No, we're not gonna go there, okay. dude. That's a minefield. I'm not trying to. Um, yeah, not, I don't think. I don't think I'm we get to, that one. We'll, we'll, we'll get I don't want that to be recorded. Yeah, well, when we get, you know, when I'm uncancelable, you know, <laughs> yeah. But at the moment, no. No, we're not going to talk about that. Um, well, to, to mention my thing, so Newburgh, right? Over the summer, they they the Newburgh school district passed a, a resolution or something that banned. They said ban political symbols, but specifically reference Black Lives Matter flags or signs and Pride flags as saying that they're po- inherently political symbols. But American flags are fine, which I'm. I don't understand. So well, it was going what about blue lives matter flag, right? You know? Yeah. So going to like fast forward, this was now like two weeks ago, I think, or last week they had their meeting where they were actually voting on the resolution. They passed it. Um, a fucking the week before they passed it, when school started, an elementary school teacher in Newburgh showed up to work in full blackface to protest, not passing it because they said that they were being discriminated against because f- fucking children w- had gay pride flags. Can you put can pull that up on the Yeah, I'll send that. that to you. It's um, it's dude, fucking you know what's crazy? insane. Ohio Ohio's like living in the 1950s cuz you know like so you know Cleveland this was the last year history was made. Uh Cleveland Indians are gone. Next year they'll be known as the Cleveland Guardians. So I'm coaching high school football, and so we're playing these like teams that are like country boys, way out in the country, hour and a half outside of like any major city, and they they must have not got the memo <laughs> because <laughs> <laughs> their their name was the Bellevue Redmen, God. the big chief Indian chief on it. Mm-hmm. So they didn't even go to the Indians. They're the, and there's multiple. So I was kind of looking up. There's multiple teams called the Redmen or Indians still. No, which just oh, yeah. cracks me up. The Redmen. That's so funny to me. But then people could argue like, well, there's Saxons or something like that, or Irishmen or whatever. I yeah, guess Saxons is actually the name of a culture, you know, or what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but the the, dude, but there's got to be a dude out there that's like, like some dude in like England or whatever, Wel- Welsh guy. I don't know. I'm mixing this up. It's like these motherfuckers stealing. Yeah. They think my proud heritage, heritage and making it <laughs> like my great 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 granddad didn't didn't involve the it, it invaded my England, came to this country. I'm gonna be racist yeah, if I we, fucking want. When to. are we going after the Celtics? That's why I want to. When are we right. going after the Celtics? The Irishmen, you know, like like are they like they had famines and stuff too? They'd eat potatoes forever, stuff like that. <laughs> I man. you know the thing is, I feel like if like we didn't rob. Uh, entire people of a bunch of land and like they you know were the dominant uh economic power the dominant people in america and they're like oh yeah we have the the umqua warriors like we cart like this is the this is this thing i'm pretty sure then it would be okay but the fact that they kind of got fucked 
and you know moved off their land and into like the shitty land and treaties. I think that that's probably why they're. Yeah, well, so, you yeah, know what, Rick? I guess I, I promised I wasn't going to bring it up, but you know, you fucking open the can of worms, dude. Oh, no. I was going to talk about vaccine. Are we talking about that, the Washington want, Football dude, Club? No, I'm talking about this, dude. Like people about the anti-vax and vaccine stuff oh, like God. this. I bet you. The Native Americans would have taken that fucking vaccine when everyone fucking came over here, you know? Oh, like, they spread all these fucking things. It's like... Oh, Lord, you know, God. The, they don't fucking... These vaccines, it's like, yeah. They, they would have taken them because they, they work, you know? That's what's fucking crazy. These people, oh, my, yeah, my, but my they choice. didn't even know what vaccines were in the 7, 15, 1600. <laughs> okay, well, actually, right? I was going to say, the 1700s. The 1700s, because George Washington had a vaccine mandate for his, for his exactly. soldiers. But my point is, is people are saying, oh, herd immunity, I'm going to let my body take care of me. Well, if that's fucking true, then they wouldn't have the great plagues and these fucking crazy, crazy fucking huge deaths. So, get moral stories is fucking, don't be an idiot. Don't think you know more than someone who's fucking dedicated their whole life to science and done this shit. You don't. Like, I, my fucking wife's a doctor. She fucking tells me, hey, you should get the vaccine. And I guarantee you don't know more than her. No matter how many fucking Google searches you can do or anything else, you're not going to be able to do it. So just just fucking just figure it out. Okay, that's, that's all I gotta man, say. you're just okay. Here we go. <clears throat> yeah. All right, here's. I'll yep. say this. I I I'm I'm pro vaccine, right? But at the same time, I really don't like. Here's my issue with it. I have issues. I think that's totally fine to have issues. Totally fine to have questions. If it it clearly saves lives, like that's the data. Right. But also, like, you can still get, you can still, pa- like, you can still transmit it and you can still get it. Like, right. So I, I understand generally if you're a young person, you're like, I don't want to get this. Sh- I get it. I'm not mad at you. I don't hate you. I'm, I'm not in favor of mandates. I think I don't like them. I think it's an infringe. I mean, this is coming from a libertarian maximum freedom. I don't like that. Um, but like I do, yes, I would. I think we should all get vaccinated. I'm not. I'm not afraid of the jab. I'm not afraid of that. But I'm also not mad, angry, or hateful, or like want people to get sick and die. Like I think that that needs to stop. But I, I do. I do think that they do do what they say they do. But I also understand. Like I also understand the argument. It's like, listen, I'm gonna just. I'm not gonna say vaccine. I'm gonna say allergy medicine. <sighs> My goodness. I took my allergy medicine and I'm still coughing and sneezing. I wish everyone else would take their allergy medicine too. Like I get that as well. Like I get it as well. I mean, I mean, I want to say this, like it's super early. There's, we're still figuring this thing out um, as we go along and we're, you know, we're going to probably make some mistakes. And I also think that it's been weaponized as a political thing and it's not a political issue. But I also, I see where people are like, yeah, it's like, it doesn't work. I don't, you know, I don't see that, but like the messaging and depending on where you get your information, that's going to state it. But I, I mean, there is something to that argument. I just said like, oh, you know, that makes sense to me as well. Or like I, I went to a bar, I had to show my passport. I didn't like that. I was pretty upset about it. Whatever. I went to the bar. And we're all vaccinated there. Why do we have to wear our masks? Well, from the Which, that doesn't make sense. <clears throat> from the to me. data right now, it's starting to turn out that I think the most of the vaccines are duds, or they they it's going to come out that they're duds. Because like, look at <laughs> well, no, for real. Look at look at Israel. They had the highest vaccination rate in the entire world, and over eighty five percent of their cases it didn't work. No, they're like they over eighty. Like they had literally had one of the best vaccinations, and they have one of the worst Delta wave. Uh, or Delta variant uh, uh, waves or whatever you want to call oh it in the majority of people that are sick are vaccinated. Oh man, please. That's please, just, I, that's I, just no, God's fighting them. You, you want to know, you want to know, you want to know, you want to know my hope. That was a joke. I, I shouldn't say this. Yes, <laughs> yeah. I'm just, that was a fucking terrible joke. God, dude, you're going to get this show canceled. Yeah, really? We're, <laughs> we're not even going to make I'm it just, to a hundred because yeah, Alan's going to fuck us. Um, <laughs> but here's, 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 Here's what here's what I'm trying to say. What if all right, everyone close your eyes and imagine this. What if there's these guys on the board, right? At at uh, Moderna, Pfizer, J and motherfucking J, and they're sitting there and like, listen guys, what if we we create a vaccine, but what if we just give everybody saline and just fucking reap these profits? All right, and we'll get all this money. All right, and then we'll tell them we'll we'll put mixed data in there. 
and then you know people are gonna get sick some people are gonna die it's okay but they have comorbidities it's gonna be fine and then when we need to do the real vaccine we'll, we'll administer the real shit that's what we're gonna do okay and we're gonna make more money it's gonna be great. Yeah, well, Does I think that's good, Fred. I, mean, I think that's what's gonna happen, though. There's gonna be, it's gonna be, we're gonna have vaccines and boosters from now on. There's gonna be a better vaccine next year. There's gonna be this. Dude, and I think, it's, I, it's all I think that's just what the world we're gonna live in. Yeah, yeah I gotta get gonna out of. A, I gotta hey, get out of tech and get into the to for the into yeah. the pharmaceutical. <laughs> Dicks right now, and, and the another th- saying this, like they said, the media is not going to stop report on it because the media this this is going to be their cash cow for ten years. Let's talk about COVID and mm-hmm. keep everyone h- hystericalized and fight with each other and stuff like that. So yeah, it's, it's this is going to be a huge profit for you know uh, media companies, pharmaceutical oh, yeah. companies. I, Mike, what the are, question uh, I've been asking this whole time is why has whenever whenever they talk about any of these vaccines, all they talk about is Pfizer. Right, Pfizer wasn't even the one who invented the technology. The mRNA vaccine technology was invented by Moderna, and Pfizer's the what's, first name, and they got the big contract. What's Pfizer's? I'm sorry to interrupt you, oh, no, dude. That, that, that was on, dude. They just they got the oh. big contract, you know. What's What's Pfizer's stock? Do, do we need to start a Rick's mind? Um, uh, not. We're just gonna have like a. I'm gonna have like a Rick's. I'm gonna do it in my Schwab account. Just all the Rick's mind stocks. And I, so code. we've invested, we've invested in prison stocks so far, and those are fucking the returns on those have been <laughs> fantastic. They've been fa- fantastic. Okay, oh, listen, I'm not. Li- I'm listen as dude as me and you being black. They've been. We need to. We need to take benefits off of our incarcerated brethren, right? And we need to tell other black people to do the same thing. We need to become shareholders. We're taking over. We we're we're corporating the prison system. Yeah. So we, we own prison stocks, and we also need to own, we also need to know Moderna, J&J, and uh, Pfizer. What, what are those stocks doing? So what, Pfizer, what are they, at least do Pfizer, they pay a dividend? Uh, do they pay a dividend? Yes, 3.69%. Oh, well. Uh, so <laughs> Pfizer... Year over, let's see. Right now, Pfizer's at forty two thirty two. Prior, oh, that's still affordable. F- prior to the pandemic, it's about the same right now. However, in uh, let's see, August, early August, uh, Pfizer stock was at forty eight. So it's still like it's up a little bit, but not as much as you would expect. Oh, we're gonna have to buy in. We're gonna definitely have. I'm buying in, dude. On the Rick Rick's mind uh, stock, you know, stock exchange or the stock report, we're buying into Pfizer. I think that I think that, you know, we're heading into Q4 right now. I think by Q1 there should be some very strong. We need to check into these prison stocks too. How are they doing? Uh, That's what I want to know. Do, do, don't, I, don't, I, I actually, I'm actually very stocks. interested in that. That's actually a brilliant idea. Oh, the, these prison stocks. Oh, dude, we. I've been trying to get the black community mobilized on this for years, and no one will listen to me. Oh, hey, prison listen. stocks tumble as Biden targets them with executive order. Oh, they do. Oh, then now's the time Let's to buy. Say, core, you, core, civic, you know, there's core civics at eight ninety four. Oh, that's uh, cheap. Geo Group is at seven sixty. And Ooh. Uh, let's see, keep looking. Oh, Who is the man, other? Palantir was another one. Mister Palantir's yeah. company. Uh, Palantir, that's a fantastic one. Ugh. How about George Soros? How about Soros and Company? Oh, God. <laughs> there we go. Uh, Palantir's at twenty three twenty one. Oh, that's can we, make, that's, can we start that's... making free Alex Jones shirts too? By the way. Oh my God, dude! <laughs> You're uh, listen. just trying to get us canceled, aren't you? No, no, I, no. I'm gonna say this right now. I. I'm gonna say this right now. I fucking love Alex Jones. Okay, oh, I, mean, I found out about him. I found out about him in college, and like so I, well, yeah. unfortunately, I was deeply, deeply into conspiracy theories at that point. And I was like, this guy's God. I love him, and he's been right about a lot of shit. Okay, he's fucking he crazy. Been. He's an alcoholic. Most of the shows he does, he's hammered drunk. Dude, he's sober he's, now, dude. He's sober. He? he stopped drinking. Oh yeah, dude, he no, was, he was on Kill Tony a few a uh, few shows ago, like one or two weeks ago, and he wasn't drinking. And he quit drinking. See, I'm convinced oh, that for him. I'm convinced that he is either fucking crazy. Oh, or, he's a genius. Or like a, a, an Andy Kaufman level performance artist. Like the greatest no, dude, performance. Artist. See, I used to love Alex Jones until Sandy Hook, and he lost me then. Yeah. Okay. That okay. Okay. Much. That's th- listen. That listen. Much. Everyone. Everyone's gonna have a bad day. All right. <laughs> I had one probably a little bit ago. You but man, yeah, yeah, the yeah, rant yeah, that he yeah. gave against, like you know, like you fucking globalists. You want to yeah. take it? Oh. We're coming. 
<laughs> you know, <laughs> they're oh, just the, these people are robots. These fucking globes. They're, they're, they're just, growing oh, man, spiders, spiders, spiders and stomachs and in pig stomachs in China. <laughs> they're all there. They're all there. Like that, did it. that Joe Rogan. Back that Joe Rogan, where he it was him and Eddie Guerrero. Like that was Eddie Bravo. That was like, oh yeah, Eddie Bravo. That was like four of the best hours of my life. That was so dumb, especially when he's just that, like. Was that the nine eleven episode? Uh, I don't know. That it no. was the one he did a couple years ago where he was just like, uh, "Joe, I'm gonna say something. I'm kind of retarded," and it's just like, ah, <laughs> yeah, bless you. Yeah. <laughs> um, real quick. Um, speaking of those characters, it is, as a as a resident retard, I can say I have I have that ability to say that. Oh my so. gosh, <clears throat> you do not. Uh, <laughs> and it's developmentally disabled for you, sir. <laughs> I'm okay, autistic. So okay, just, just I'm part of the dude, you are not I autistic. I am. I have been diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder. You, oh Dude, my! I heard Marco's black too. Actually, <laughs> he's, he's transracial. I'm, I'm coming to he's, the cookout. Yeah. Listen, by the way, <laughs> <laughs> like, like an unsalted uh, potato salad. I'm like yeah, that. Yeah, I'm yeah. like those. I'm like the dude that's like you watch those like noisy documentaries about like. They're just hanging in the hood at a bando talking to some like you know underground rapper, and there's this just like awkward white guy in the corner that everybody's just vibing with, and that's me. We just need know? someone to talk to the cops, dog. Right, straight yeah, up, I'm the, I can run. I can run defense for you. Um, he has what's like going on, Burns. officer? Everything's hey, we, fine. He, he's friends with us just because we'll tell you about lotion. All up, Bill Burr. Why people they need <laughs> lotion, lotion? Yes, that's a uh, it. It might is. not be black, that but is. I get ashy as fuck, dude. <laughs> I, can't, I can't with him, dude. I fucking can't, dog. Like straight. Hey, I get the elbows and knuckles, man. Oh, every day, yes. every day. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, what well, I was, I wanted to. There was one thing I wanted to discuss, and I don't. I mean, this basically just turned into a fireside chat, which is glorious. Right, um. Yeah. Yeah, fire fireside chat featuring Demarco. That's we'll we'll add it. Yeah, um, no, there, what the fuck was that? What I want to talk about? I want to talk about something. It's gone. I don't know. I don't know wow. where it went. Yeah, wow. it's gone. So hundred yeah, percent gone. You my, uh, um... Oh, th- listen to this, dude. So twenty twenty was bad for because the... I think the last time I was on here, I always have to shit on Toledo a little bit. I haven't got mm-hmm. to do that yet quite this a bit. It's true. Yeah, so uh, we're at about 19 more months for update for the listeners. Uh, and 19? Toledo is on. Yeah, 19 <sighs> more months to go. <laughs> yeah. Yikes. And I've been to Toledo to- once. I feel like that was enough. Why were you ever there? Uh, you I, was, I was in Cleveland for a wedding. I drove through. Okay. Sure, yeah. Akron wouldn't, was, well, Akron was pretty bad. No. Yeah. All I remember, uh, all I remember about Cleveland is driving through a really, really what looked like structurally unsound uh, highway exit underneath the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. That, that's my biggest memory from Cleveland. So, anyways, you've been in 19 more months in Toledo. <laughs> yeah, 19 more months in Toledo, and um, I think they're on pace now to break their murder record this year that was previously set last year. Damn. Of the high. And before that, was like the high was like in 1980. So just in the last two years, they're gonna break the record for the for the murder rate here. So oh that's- well, let's just well, how many what more they have the to show? Go? This is super exciting. Yeah, how how well, the, how close are how much? And 19 more months, dude. That's, you think that with all the, the unvaccinated COVID deaths in Florida, they get, they could beat you? You know. <laughs> Maybe that's not murder. I'm. Well, th- listen, uh, we. I know everyone on the show is rooting for Cleveland, or excuse me, Toledo to get that record. We're all. <laughs> not DeMarco yeah, sure. shaking. He says, "No, just, that's I'm fucking just, awful." I, yeah, well, it's uh, it's awful. But I mean, of all the things that have been said in this episode, that's kind of kind of kind of not the worst thing. You know? Yeah, yeah. You're gonna need really need to put this up as like <laughs> we're just just put it up as like. We're we don't know sorry. what the fuck we're doing. Just, it no, just like, yeah, it happened. We're, sorry, we're guys. So- this is definitely like a we're sorry episode. Like, I, <laughs> I, 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 I got a good photo to put up for me. I'll send you guys a good photo, too, so they can kind of okay. do me at the wedding. Dude, I was fucking looking crispy with the hat, <laughs> earring. Yeah, I that one. I was real eccentric. You did pierce your right ear, though, which you know what that means. That was my left. 
I'm just kidding. I was fucking with you. Oh, DeMarco. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, man. Well, dude, uh, let's wrap this up, dude. Let's wrap. I think real, it's almost been like. Well, actually, look, I got one ahead. more question about that. Keep going. Uh, real quick, yeah. What other other sign? Like, uh, is that real? Other real thing, DeMarco? I'm only asking you because you said. You uh, I mean, weird. I'm not oh, the but... gay. I mean, I guess I'm the gayest here, but in reality, I'm not. I I think so. I think there might be some connotation to it. Listen, or at least there might have been no. in like the '90s. God damn it. We're getting into this right now. Okay. I really we're don't know get genuinely, in. honestly. I'll, let me look. Let me look. Now, he's, because, dude, what are all these signs? I heard like upside down. I know that, I know that traditionally, swingers. traditionally, piercings like nose and ear piercings, if you do one of them, the left side is feminine, I think, and the right side is masculine, but that's from like some other cultures. Well, I heard les- only lesbians pierce their eyebrows. <laughs> that's such bullshit dude <laughs> that's all <laughs> bullshit man that's all bullshit no way i'm not buying it i've never well have you ever seen a gay a gay guy with a pierced eyebrow i've seen straight people with pierced eyebrows right straight it's either straight, it's either straight or lesbians Here for some reason go. gay guys don't do the eyebrow i don't know why i heard that somewhere <laughs> I, I don't okay There's so, no so this comes in so the the whole thing of the, the gay ear comes from a 1991 new york times report that had quote that says quote often wore a they often wear a single piece of jewelry in the right ear to indicate sexual preference. Yeah. So yeah, you, you, I mean, did, not, you just, did the you did the the not gay ear. So right. we you yeah that's just. I remember that that was what I was told when they're like, "Are you going to pierce them both or just one?" Because you just got to be on the left. Yeah. I said, like, "I'm a double piercing dog." When I was in high school, I had those fake, yeah. cubic, oh, had those zirconia fat diamonds, fucking diamonds. Oh, that's when you met me. I I still had you that. You did, student. yeah. I- yeah. <laughs> I, you know, you know, funny thing. Andrew and I hated each other when we first met. We fucking were mortal enemies. Mortal. I would, all I remember first meeting you were just like, dude, you should listen to Tyler the Creator. That was is that what I said? Yeah, that would something like that. He's like, you seem like you like childish can be. You know, listen to Tyler the Creator, and I was like, all right, cool. And then you're like, oh my god! I was like, oh shit, I like this guy. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was, I was, I was pretty deep into Odd Future Wolfgang at that time. Yeah, I still am. Um. Yeah, I want to tell the story about how Andrew and I were mortal enemies. It was uh, fall camp, and this, and I see this this African. And I was like, yeah, what's up? I mean, I hated him in the beginning because on the visiting day, he was wearing his Letterman's jacket, like when we were visiting the school. <laughs> yeah, I was still in fucking. Ball. I know the whole the whole thing is I was still Just in high school. High school, school I drip. Him, I, Oh, well, I was going to retire. I retired that as soon as I graduated. So I was like, I'm going to fucking wear this every fucking chance I got. And Ricky was just jealous because my shit was fucking decked out. Cause I had so no, I- no, I wasn't. I was like, this kid's a douche. He's in the past. <laughs> I was all high school was like, letterman. Okay. Was like, this, Respect this, the drip. This dude, he's stuck in the past. I was like, he's probably from a fucking small <laughs> school. Thinks he's the shit. And I was like, man, fuck this kid. Like, I'm better boy than song? everyone. I was, a, I was a terrible person. I was like, I'm better than everyone. Anyways. <laughs> Fall camp. We didn't even talk. I just saw him. I did. I had. I wanted nothing to do, and I hated him. Um. And so then, fall camp, we show up, and this motherfucker's rooming with me, and I was like, great. And I think that um, his his sister, who's who's white, uh, I thought it was his mom. She's a little older, but like beautiful. And sorry, but she was just beautiful. <laughs> You're making and, this awkward. Um, just get to the I'm point. Like, and I'm like, and I'm no, no, no. It's funny. It's a good story. And 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 I'm, I was like, is that you know, is that your mom? He's like, no, it's my sister. She's hot as fuck. And that's <laughs> <laughs> that's what I said to him. Oh my god! <laughs> and he just looks at me. I don't know. Like, I don't know him fuck? at all. I don't know him at all. And and from that day, it was just war. It was war. <laughs> but then we became friends, man. We just we talked so much shit. I did make you watch the what the, some terrible sci-fi oh, movies. No. Yeah. <laughs> were you two in the same position well, group or something? Yeah, yeah we were. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah, we were. Well, yeah. the thing is, because Ricky. Back then, he introduced himself as Ricky. Then all of a sudden, he goes, "No, no that's not." Oh my god! It's dude, like, hey, I'm Ricky Brooks. Fucking do this. Right, I said, like, "My name is." Uh, oh. So anyway. And then he goes, oh no, I fucking said Rick. And then okay. this is he just again. he just started <laughs> hanging out with people that I didn't really like, and then I just I just knew they're all fucking full of shit. And then that was just I was like, well, he's associated with those people. Well, fuck him. And that's just what I did. Yeah. <laughs> then we became roommates again. I love hearing that, stories then, from Rick's from your friends, Rick, because it's always just like. 
Man, Rick was such a piece of shit back in the day, but I love him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, was. <laughs> I was. I was. I mean, I was, I was a like, good. I was too, though. That's why we kind of. That's why at some level yeah. we kind of like. We're always we we're always attracted to each other, not like much physically, but like the universe kept put us together. The same yeah. the same dorm room, then the same building, sit right next to each other, and then yeah. we were neighbors. You know, like we yeah, we neighbors. had stated Heritage Hall on the sixth floor, and we were neighbors. And then at that point, it was like, all right, like it plus, like it was, it was nice living with him because like everyone else's like uh, dorms look like a fucking disaster, and we all kept our shit clean. Yeah. Like we like we were very organized. It was a very nice rooming situation for me. So yeah. And by the way, I did, I definitely did not introduce myself as Ricky. Like that, I <laughs> I've gone by Rick since I was a sophomore in high school. Like you're fucking nuts. I don't I know just, where uh, my intuition you figured just, it out to piss me off. Called you Ricky, huh? The, that was a the, huge point of contention at one point <laughs> in time. But yeah, man, uh, it's been shit ten, nine, ten years. I've known you. And I love you like a brother, dude. And like, uh, as always, it's been eleven. It's been a long I mean, time. Actually, maybe we met. It was two thousand nine. Yeah, September, yeah, ten years. August, August, ten, twelve, dude. Do the math. Is oh, 12, no, 12 years, 12 years, 12 years. Crazy, man. It, it's, yeah, time's, time's flying, man. It's, it's been, and it's been a journey, man. And, and it's been great watching you grow and, you know, continue on the humanitarian side of things and, and suffering. And just like, that's been like a joy to, I'm just, <laughs> hey, I was just telling the story. So there, the tale lives in, in Toledo, Ohio, about that one uh, Halloween party you threw because we were in October now and it's spooky season. And, oh, yeah. Remember that, that rager? Like, uh, it was like 700 people deep, dude. Like, it was nuts. It's, it was uh i yeah when Please i went charge, when, when tell i me charged door no 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 not at all dude i had we had two <laughs> djs was, what a crazy man huh we had it two djs crazy. in the base oh dude i was uh, chasing ladies at that point we had two djs in the basement and like we didn't advertise this party um i think no kegs just byob and like i think the cops busted a frat house and people started making their way across the campus to my house and it like there like it literally was like it turned what was that movie project x or whatever yeah like there really were, I mean, yeah there was, was like seven like in this house it got out of control like out of control and i am just i'm hammered just like yes so like i'm living i'm living my fucking college dream i've got <laughs> i mean my room like the, the, you couldn't move in my house yeah. it's one of those old like three-story houses my bedroom it's got a sound system in there too there's hookah it's just packed with, with ladies i'm like this is the dream and the cops bust it there was an oil spill like it, it was out of control, man. Oh my it was god! One of the one of the wildest one of the wildest nights of my life. It was incredible. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, that was a fucking wild time. But anyways, happy, yeah, happy well, that's Halloween season. So happy that Happy Halloween. That was, yeah. those were the days, man. Yeah. Those were the, now we're we're old men now, and it's glorious. But hey, thanks for listening, uh, listeners. That was uh, it was a masterpiece. It was a gem. I, I think we're I, gonna I, go to streamy, honestly. I'm probably yeah, I'm probably gonna regret a lot of things that were we were discussed in this show. <laughs> and if I offended you, if I offended you, I'm sorry. Rick has participated and, uh, in Bio you know, Razor. It's it, and you know, even, it's great. What a what a I show. What, what does that mean? What did you just say? <laughs> I don't know what you just said. I'm not woke. I'm not woke, bitches. I love you. Peace.